Hi, I'm Chris DeBenedictus, and this is my review for The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Every day, I wake up knowing that the more people I try to save, the more enemies I will make. And it's just a matter of time before I face those with more power than I can overcome. With great power comes great responsibility. This phrase is a major theme in nearly every one of the five films in the Spider-Man franchise, which makes its absence in the latest installment, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, even more glaring. Our hero is there, doing his job, shouldering his burdens, but the film feels chaotic and presents a Spider-Man that is very unlike the one we have come to know. Nothing is what I thought it was. This is bigger than you, Peter. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 begins with Peter Parker graduating from high school. The people of New York have embraced Spider-Man as their hero and protector. And with every major fight in the movie, there is an accompanying chorus of fans chanting his name. Peter's old friend Harry Osborn is back in town, and he needs Peter there as a friend. And Max Dillon, a big fan of Spider-Man's who craves recognition of his own, falls into a vat of electric eels and becomes Electro. Plus, Peter and Gwen Stacy are on the outs, but they still love each other. The plot is packed to bursting, and it definitely shows. It's as if the filmmakers were trying to fit five or six plot lines into one film, and it just doesn't work. One example is the relationship between Peter and Gwen. The sparkling chemistry between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone is one of the best things about the film, and it is simply squandered by focusing on so many other elements. Just kissed me. Right. How'd you like it? I felt a little bit rushed. You can't watch The Amazing Spider-Man 2 without thinking of the original Spider-Man 2, the second installment in the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy. That film, more than any other, knew what Spider-Man is all about. Responsibility. Every scene, every decision, Every sacrifice Peter made in that movie reflected his acceptance of the responsibility that came along with his power. This latest film never comes close to that sense of awareness of what the spider is really all about. That must be pretty cool, huh? To have the whole world see you like that. The amazing Spider-Man. I wish I was like him. I like to think Spider-Man gives people hope. However, the movie is still fun to watch due mostly to the lead actor's performance. Andrew Garfield, even more than Tobey Maguire, was born to play Spider-Man. He embodies the role in every way, from his snappy wit to his lanky posture. He is Spider-Man, but the movie makes way too little use of this, saddling him with awkward dialogue and too many things to think about. What? what? What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm doing my laundry. laundry. I, last time you did it, you turned everything blue and red. Because I was washing the, the 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 American flag, my my flag. No one washes a flag. Not no anymore. No one washes a flag. All right, laundry sheriff. All in all, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a disappointment. Spider-Man is my all-time favorite superhero, and it saddens me to see his story told so poorly. People identify with Spider-Man more than any other hero even Captain America, because he is just like us, a normal person who just happens to have great responsibility thrust upon him. I hope for the future of the current Spider-Man series that the filmmakers live up to their subject by accepting their great responsibility. You know what it is I love about being Spider-Man? 